When I first started uh, needing a CNC router slash mill machine, I did my homework on the internet and found open builds. And the open build plate maker, C Bean Plate Maker, was an ideal fit for me. I had created a maker product that I had a contract on, but they wanted guarantees that I could produce so many a month. And there was a tremendous amount of hand operations involved. So I went ahead and uh, purchased the, the uh, C Bean Plate Maker kit in October, put it together, and have ran it many hundreds of hours producing the, the uh, parts and perfecting my skill with it. I discovered right off that I, it was a little small for my, you know, some of my operations. I've also got into sign making, you know, the typical edge lit cast acrylic signs, and uh, I, I could use with a little wider uh, machine for that. Uh, after considering all the different oxen variations, I decided just to expand my machine, and uh, this is the result. It's a basically a plate maker with just uh, the X expanded out to a thousand millimeters. Uh, the big part of this job was coming up with a table that was solid. I like having my uh, controls out here on the front so I can zero a lot of my individual small parts. I like to zero on each individual piece. So that gives me a chance to go over here and zero the X, the Z, and the Y uh, <clears throat> from the front. So I reversed the, uh, the Y axis and basically it's the same one I was using on the the standard plate maker. Uh, the wider table is uh, it's 12 by 24 inches. You can actually go out to 34 inches on this machine, but the cost of the uh, the metal for that that half inch plate for that center part would uh, was prohibitive. So I wanted to demonstrate how I solved the problem with it being kind of like a teeter totter, not very secure when it's this wide with a single actuator, and I didn't want to run two actuators. Because of various reasons, mainly because adjusting both of them at the same time to manually move the machines seemed to be a little obstacle for me. <clears throat> so what I've done here is I've, I've set a dial indicator, and you can see I can adjust it plus and minus, so it's right down on the bed, and we'll set it to zero. And I'm going to take 25 pounds of lead shot, place it on the other side. 25 pounds of lead shot, and you notice that. We're still dead on zero. Um, 25 pounds is, is, is a lot of material, and it doesn't seem to affect this thing at all. And as I run it, you can see that by having those those little outrigger wheels that I developed on either side, I can not only support the bed, I can actually level the bed. So it it does a real good job of supporting and leveling the bed. Now this side over here, I have the uh, the housing all installed. It's got brushes to keep the tracks brushed off as best as it can. And of course, this is just a little piece of aluminum angle that covers the uh, the three wheels. All three wheels have eccentrics that allows you to kind of tune them independently and get the get kind of a ramping effect if you need it. Uh, you can, you know it doesn't take a lot of pressure. In fact, you can you can kind of just barely turn the wheels by hand. It, so it's not a lot of downward pressure, so you're not warping the plate, you're just supporting the plate. And all I did was add a couple of pieces of uh, 20 by 40 V-slot with a couple of angle brackets. Real simple, real inexpensive. I had most of the parts already, and it's, it's turned out to be a godsend as far as how, how stable this thing is. You'll also notice that I've got T-slot around the perimeter, and these little uh, brackets on my hold downs and I designed those on CAD and then cranked them out and just kind of bent them in the in a vise so they can hold either short short range like this or I can go a longer range like so and the little T-bolts there you notice I've taken a piece of the T-slot cut it and drilled it so it sets over the top it helps kind of equalize the pull through pressure but these are just 5 16 toilet bolts Got to slightly modify them and cut them off, but that was the easy solution. And these things work great for holding stuff down. Uh, I've got some flat ones that I use for um, taller stuff like three quarter inch wood. But for holding aluminum plates and quarter inch plastic and all that kind of stuff, these things work really well. So you might consider something like that. I see a lot of people gluing and screwing. 
and it just uh, makes it a little harder. Another neat thing about having this perimeter is this uh, this spoiler board. I can just lift it in and out. Just turn my little knobs out of the way, and I can flip it over, reuse it. Or if I want to put a waterproof version like Corian in there, drops right in. You know, it's like 10 and a half by 22 and a half, something like that. But it's been a real good enhancement. Uh, like I say, the, the, the little wheels are installed just on a piece of quarter inch by one inch uh, aluminum bar that I drilled. Uh, I have a sample somewhere around here. I did it all on a drill press. There we go. Sorry about that. But you just counter, counter bore the holes uh, using those little step drills and then uh, drill the right size hole for the eccentric and then just uh, bolt them on on the side here, drill through and tap into the tap into the edge. You see I'm actually using um, the hole, the bolts that hold it into the, the half inch plate to actually support my, my corner pieces. So two corner pieces, uh, three eccentrics, three wheels, and a plate on each side, and then a little a little aluminum cover. Just a simple little old inch and a half by inch and a half lightweight aluminum cover. And that kind of protects everything. And you kind of have a dust-free environment. The little uh, riveted in pieces here are just pieces of door sweep that I cut up and kind of bent 90 degrees so they'd fit in there properly. But this has been working good, and uh, I look forward to burning up many more hundreds of hours. Thanks for watching.